Hello everyone, welcome to the THR show. My name is Osasu Paul Azino. The THR show focuses on social sector managers and entrepreneurs who by sheer determination and passion work through their projects. And this show will focus on the challenges and the impacts of this project. Please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, comments, suggestions, or people you would like us to interview, please drop a comment below. Hello viewers, welcome to the THR show. My name is Usasu Paul Azino. Eramos is quoted to have said, the main hope of a nation lies in the proper education of its youth. My guest on the show is one woman educating the young people and particularly focused on the girl child. Please make welcome Ogechuku Eziokori. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Can I, can I call you Ogi? Yeah. Okay, sure. So please tell us about yourself, what you do. Give us a bit of a background. Okay. My name is Ogechuku Ezokoli, like you have said. Um, I'm the president of Tinset Foundation. The full meaning is the Teens Economic and Social Development Foundation. Okay. So I call myself a teacher. Oh. Yeah, because I've taught for quite a long time before venturing into this. Um, tell, tell us about Tinset Foundation. What what are your goals and your objectives and the activities that you run at Tinset? All right. Tinset Foundation um, is basically fo focused on engaging young people and empowering them to become global leaders. Okay. And uh, we do that in three main um, focal points. There's um, entrepreneurship education, sex education, and the career development. Okay. So we try to empower them. We want, we want them to know who they are and we empower them that they can do a lot of things by themselves through entrepreneurship education. We help them to, to, to create a path in their career, try to allow them or inspire them to think inwards, okay. to know who they are before they choose a particular um, career. Okay. Then in the area of um, sex education, we, we teach them to have character-based relationships okay. because you can't take away a relationship from them, but we let them know that you can have a good relationship with same sex, and opposite sex with sexual integrity. So how do you reach these people? All right, we reach them in their various schools. We organize seminars and conferences, summits to talk to them. Then we organize awards. We train them on um, entrepreneurship education and then award the, one, the, the ones that have done very well. We usually teach them how to write business plan. Oh, really? Yeah, very well in that we award them cash prizes. So like last year, we trained like 789 people. And out of that, we had some of them that did fantastically well, like eight of them, and they were awarded. It was actually sponsored. So we, we, we do that. Then we, we meet them in their schools to talk about character-based relationship and counsel them. So you basically reach them in their schools? In their, in their schools. Do you have different, do you, do you differentiate between the public schools and the private schools? Who are your target? Who exactly are your target um, audience when it comes to the teenagers? It's everybody. Okay, so but it's all teenagers. All teenagers. So you reach out to them in their schools, in both their private schools, yeah. and public schools. Yeah. Where, where, where are you currently um, working? What, what communities are you currently working? Currently, we are working in Ijibo community. We okay. work in Ogun State, in Elaro, okay. um, in Iju. In okay. Ikeja. Okay. Now we are in Ijibo. We have a program we are running in Ijibo okay. currently. Okay, so you say, you, you say that like you take some time to work in communities before you move on. Exactly. So how much exactly. time do you spend in a community? When you identify a community, how much time do you spend in that community? It all depends. There's, it could be a one-off thing, okay. but now we run like six months okay. training okay. In, in a community, then do the award thing and then move on to another Community, depending on the project we have at hand. Okay. So if we want to organize a seminar, we can do a seminar and it's a one-off thing, but we'll keep following up on them because we have their contact to find out how far we have, what we have done, the impact we have made. You know, we mm. try to follow up and find out mm. the, the progress and okay. whatever we have taught them. Okay. So I see that you do a lot with young people and in your introductions, you said you were a teacher. So I'm wondering, uh, and you're working in schools, 
So I'm wondering why, 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 why did you leave? Um, why did you stop being a teacher in in, in that sense? You know, and, and start this foundation. Why, why was it important, you know, to start this foundation? I started what I'm doing without knowing what I'm doing. Okay. You know, um, I, I, I gather girls basically in my room and we talk, you know, they come from different schools. They were neighborhood child, uh, teenagers and we talk. Eventually the boys who, that are their friends said, ah, Madam, why are you talking to only girls? We want to hear too. So we have them. So I, I just felt like I should talk to girls. There's but but why, why do you need to talk to girls? Because... Okay, that's my motivation now. Yes, like why yeah. exactly? I had um, maybe my background. Okay. Um, when I was growing up, I realized I made a lot of mistakes, um, which could have been avoided if I had someone to guide me. So, because basically my parents were divorced, so yeah. I was just there. You know, and so, sometimes when I see people I think should talk to me, they just believe that I should know it or something. So while, while um, I became an adult, I felt I should talk to young girls. There are things they need to know on time. Mm -hmm. That something that has to do with self-esteem mm -hmm. is, is very key on a girl's life. So I started talking to them. Where I, things were unfolding. I was hearing a lot of things, you know, and they needed someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. So we talk, we share our ideas. I give them a lot of encouragement. So from there, that was, after then, that was when I became a teacher. And what inspired me was fueled in the school. I saw a whole lot. There's a lot of decadence. There's a lot of neglect on teenagers, not just the girls. So I, I, I really felt that this thing is not about the girl. Whatever the, the girl knows, the boy should equally know. Mm -hmm. Because if you're telling a girl not to, you know, go into sexual relationship with a boy, and he has, has having pressure, from a boy, he doesn't, the boy doesn't even know why he should not pressure the girl. And the girl wants to yield, but if both of them know what is at stake. What's at stake. Yes, what's at stake. They will, the future. Exactly, they'll be futuristic, they'll think about them, their lives and all yeah. of that. Yeah. They can have a good relationship without necessarily having sex, mm -hmm. if they know the dangers that are attached that are to attached all of that. To. So, so I, I do. how much you can probably be distracting in the time. Exactly, exactly. So, in fact, in the school, I wasn't just a teacher, I became the school counselor, I became everything. People were like, ah, Madam, what's... It just so, so your passion failed your career, which has finally, you know, metamorphosized into this foundation that Exactly, you because even when I... People were telling me, you are doing a, an NGO. I said, what's the NGO? Then I didn't know what, what it was. Doing.